Greg, appreciate you taking the time. I uh, know you're on your way to Europe. Uh, let's get right into it. Roster is very intriguing for a lot of people on the outside, but even for those of us that have been following this team and covering this team for numerous amount of years, uh, a lot of red raw meat. Awful analogy. I came up with it. It sounds brutal. However, truth be told, 19 players eligible to play for the Olympics, 14, 20 or younger. Why? So I think, Taylor, you know, this is the generation that we've been talking about, um, this young group of talent that we have. And this is giving them the opportunity to a, experience what it's like to be a full national team member, mm -hmm. but then also to start developing and start coming together. You know, we, we believe in this group of players, and now it's about just giving them time together and letting them grow. Uh, I want to ask you a personal question. Nine months, you haven't coached. You feel rusty at all going into oh, this? Absolutely is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's tough. I, like I'm going through all this stuff in my head, but it, 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 you know, on the field, uh, it's going to feel strange. But I'm thankful to be back. I just can't wait you know, for that, that opening whistle to the Wales game and getting back to work. Greg, in all seriousness, though, how, how much pressure do you feel to try to cram nine and a half months into this, what, nine, ten day camp? Yeah, you know, so I, I think that's a that's a great question. And and the, the answer to that is this group is going to need time, right? I, I think, you know, even myself, like, I, you know, I want it to be perfect from the opening whistle against Wales, but I also realize it's not going to be. And I'm also, you know, not going to overload them in the, in the days up to the Wales game. You know, for me, for us, it's about keeping them simple, putting them in positions to succeed while still trying to play the way we want to play. Greg, when you look at this group of players, and obviously a lot of U.S. men's national team fans are ecstatic about how many Americans are playing at big clubs across Europe. Now, your generation was playing over in Europe. We know that it started the trend. However, this is new territory for Americans to kind of, I don't know, lower expectations. What is your number one goal trying to get out of this, I don't know, excited but still inexperienced group? Well, you know, so, you know, we certainly weren't playing at the level they were playing at. But for us, it's about just preparing the group to, to start achieving our goals. And that's World Cup qualifying, you know, working with this group, starting to talk about what it's like qualifying in CONCACAF. You know, it's a different animal. And um, so, you know, I, I think, you know, when, we t when you talk about this, you know, the, the November camp, you know, potentially December, January, March, Nations League, Gold Cup, all this is doing is preparing this young group to qualify for the World Cup because we can't reach any of our goals, Taylor, if we, don't, if, we don't, if we don't qualify for the World Cup, and that's absolutely the first step. What's your biggest challenge right now in a global pandemic of trying to get this team ready for World Cup qualifying? You know, we're, we're a hands-on staff. You know, I love to hug the guys. I love messing around. I love having yep. you know, meetings where we're together, team-building stuff. And it's like there's this barrier put up by COVID that, you know, it, it's going to prevent us from doing that. So I'd say that's a challenge with the type of staff that we are. We're very much a hands-on type of staff. Let's look at one of the key players, arguably the most important player from some people's perspective, Christian Pulisic, this injury conundrum at Chelsea. You hear Frank Lampard say one thing, you then see another Greg, what do you make of the, of the entire situation? Because it feels like every time the international break comes around, all of a sudden there's a question mark on, on whether or not Christian's available. You know, I, I, don't, I don't see it like that. You know, I, okay. I really see it as a, as a young player who's just adapting to the demands of, of a different game, of a different schedule. And, you know, it, when you get injured, when you have a muscle injury, you know, it takes you a while to get fully fit and, and recover. And, and this is part of his recovery process. I have no doubt that he's going to be a player that is, is fit for a long period of time when he gets through this period. Yunus Musa, who is he? How'd you find him? And what kind of player is he going to be? So Yunus is a, um, we have a good connection with Valencia through our assistant coach, Nico Estevez, who used to work at Valencia. And, um, you know, they notified us of a player that came over about two years ago, 18 months ago. And, and um, you know, since then, we've been tracking him and we've been contacting him. You know, I, I spoke to him for the first time probably 18 months ago. And, um, you know, it, we're keeping an eye on him, keeping, keeping track of what he was doing. But what I'd say, Taylor, is that, you know, we're talking about a, a young, dynamic player, ton of potential, um, 
you know, when you hear stories about a 17 year old being one, a top pro in a club already in terms of his work ethic and what he does, I mean, it's really, it's really exceptional and really special. Uh, Greg, obviously there's a ton of excitement around this group uh, of unknowns, but I think there's also a, a conversation that needs to be had of what are you going to do with the MLS contingent of players? What are the plans of trying to get them into camp and, and how do you deal with this? Because you did use a word when this roster was announced. It's a sacrifice. What, why is it a sacrifice from your point of view? Well, it, it's a sacrifice, Taylor, because ideally I would love to have, you know, everyone in camp. I would love to have, you know, a, you know, a guy like Jackson Ewell, you know, Aaron Long, you know, um, Sebastian Leggett, um, you know, Josie Altador, Michael Brett. You know, you'd like to have, you'd like to be able to call everyone that, you see, um, you know, helping this team into this camp. And we didn't do that. And we didn't do that for a reason that, you know, the MLS coaches have invested so much in this season. The players have invested so much in this season. They've been through so much. And to say now, okay, we're going to take you away and you're going to potentially miss the playoffs. I wasn't comfortable with that. And I, and I know that, you know, even the owners, you know, have been, have been, you know, sacrificing to keep this thing going this year. And to, to have their key players missing during the playoffs, I just wasn't comfortable with. And, and that's the sacrifice we had to make. When do you fully expect to see these MLS players? Do you have any plans on the docket well, or is that still yeah, waiting I mean, to so see? We'll, but we'll have a December camp again. We'll, we'll, we'll start to look at some players. We'll have a January camp again, you know, and then hopefully March is when we'll get the full group together again. Um, everyone, everyone back together. All right, Greg, safe travels. I appreciate you taking the time and uh, answer the doorbell because someone desperately needs to get into that house. <laughs> Thanks, Taylor. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.